what we're talking about now. I still have to pick the next one. Then. You got an idea or two? I do have one, but I'm pretty well, sure. Oh, you should turn that down. About it. Oh, never mind. Sorry. It's super quiet. Welcome to the official Butthole Podcast, bringing you movies, video games, and randomness in between. Now bringing your host, Scott, Hello, the Fresh Great Pants. Brandino, Gages Rage, Angry Beaver, and Star Lamar. What would the kids call that intro, Gage? That's a sexy saxophone intro. That slaps. There we go. That's what I was it's looking lit. for. It's lit. It's lit. So right before the podcast, I was informed that Nick at Night now consists of cartoons from my childhood, which is very far away from what it was when I was young. It was shows that I had zero interest in. So maybe kids don't have interest in Rugrats and Hey Arnold and shit anymore. But it was Happy Days and was the one with the Winnie. Winnie the the Pooh. No. (laughs) It's had the Fred Savage, the Wonder Years. Oh, it was it was shows like that that I in my head were like super fucking old, but were really only like a decade old. You know, and that's probably what Nick and Knight is appealing to. It's appealing to those adu- young adult, you know, to people who will be up after ten o'clock. They're assuming kids went to bed. You're yeah. up past ten o'clock. Fuck that shit, dude. I wake up early. I got a kid. I'm, I'm. Lo- you guys are For lucky. Part, I'm here as late as I am, and this is at my own house. When I check the guide, and Nickelodeon's got. Uh, Rugrats and Angry Beavers <laughs> at midnight. I might stay up and watch some of my cartoons in my childhood. I think too. you you're watching it. You're on a different station. <laughs> no, I got rid of my Angry Beavers. What the yeah. fuck? What the fuck website are you on that, <laughs> that you're watching Rugrats and Angry Beavers? <laughs> That's some twisted shit, dude. Is that in the same category? <laughs> I don't know why any of us are surprised what talking that about. Gage is awake. At that time, he sets his alarm to show up for these podcasts. <laughs> That's true. That's true. He texts us in the group chat the other day. We're like, oh, I bet you he's taking a nap. He, Every time is a good time for a nap. It was so good, I took a second one a little bit later. It's like, fuck you, dude. Like, I'm not it's even done with work yet. Tough life, but someone's got to live it, That's man. fair. No, so, Nick and Knight's got shredders and, uh, like you said. Like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle shredders? No, no. I think that's a licensing deal, though. Oh, because I think hey, what they, if they, could, they own they own Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Don't Do they? they? I I've know there's a ride at Nickelodeon Universe. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles ride. Wasn't yeah. Friends on Nick at Night for a while? Yep. Yeah, Friends will still be on like the earlier, like before midnight, and then they'll the switch people who to the go to sleep cartoons. late, but not that insomnia. late. Yeah, these are like an- anime fans. You know, they're the ones who are up after midnight, so they're they're going from their Attack on Titan, and then they're going into uh, yeah. Cage gets Cat home, dog. takes off his furry costume, and watches cartoons. Doesn't even take it off. No, he watches right in it. Yeah, that's that's preferred viewing pleasure. Over under four and a half times, Gage has watched anime porn. Oh, I thought you were going to say this nap week. today. Oh, over. 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 <laughs> even. So, so Nick at night's whole schedule today this is week? stopped halfway through. What today? What was the time frame? This uh, week. This week. It's the beginning of the week. Over. I'm, I'm taking the over. <laughs> what was your schedule today? Did you have anything going on? I, I did play a couple rounds of disc golf, actually. I got so he's no under disc then. back. Yeah, no naps today. Gage lost a disc. Playing it was me not last my time. loss. I gave this fucker a disc to use, and he totally shanked my probably one of my most valuable discs. Well, that's your problem. You gave him not a nice disc. Not in production anymore. Uh, very old. One of my first discs I got. Luckily, I got it back. You know what he said? In the world. He said, aim for the lake. Do you know, Just I got see how many times you can news, skip though. it. You missed hey, the first part. Do not. Oh. No. I tune out the first half of conversations. I jump in at the end. It's like reading a book. Yeah. Here's the way it works. Like, when you're trying to coach him, he does the complete opposite. But if I don't say anything, he'll do the same thing over and over. So I tried to coach him, did the exact opposite, went in the water. It's like playing Fortnite with Next you. 10 don't pros, put a fucking exactly marker what down. I wanted to do on that one. <laughs> you put a marker down in Fortnite, I'm not going there. <laughs> I'm you don't not. put a saddle on a stallion, bro. <laughs> Last time we were gaming, someone did give Brandon a challenge to stay within 25 meters of me, and he hated it. It sucked. <laughs> we almost measure? won. Uh, when you shoot a pin, it'll tell you how far away you are. We just guesstimated. <laughs> I think we got closer to like 30. We were, we stretched it from here and there. Gage but... ran the opposite direction to make me lose right away. <laughs> <Yeah>. Oh. <laughs> oh. 
I, I looked up the football. I don't remember if that was the bit or the other thing. They no, we'll do it in this. Last week, the one that had like wings. Oh, yeah. Shit's like 100 bucks. Really? It's like $80. Yeah. But it's, it's like brother. an actual plane. Yes. Yeah, like, that's what I was saying. It takes yeah. wind and glide and all sorts of shit into effect. I um, almost bought it, but I wasn't drunk enough. <laughs> I was thinking about getting one, too, and I looked it up. I was like, fuck that. That's, that's I guess my cheap. brother does I thought it was like a nah. toy. <laughs> Like a little toy with wings on it. This thing's like big. It's big. Yeah, it's fuck that, dude. What? That's what Biden money's for. Buy yes. that shit, Bring your dude. Stimmy, man. You can yeah. get 17 of them. Fuck yeah. That looks so much better in my account. <laughs> <laughs> That's what most people probably think. I, I'm still saving the first one for the PS5 whenever the fuck those become available. They're going to so purposely hold luck. them. I got one. I'll sell you. I don't fucking use it anymore. I'll give you <laughs> 400. Storage. I know what's happened to it. I'll give you 400 bucks for it. <laughs> yeah. We'll talk off cast. All right, I'll probably take. I'll probably talk you down a little more. <laughs> There's more that's happened to it. Oh no! no. <laughs> Scott's bidding himself down yeah. on his PS5. It's like, fuck. Is this damaged goods? Yeah, yeah. It is. Four hundred dollars. I don't think it's even worth two hundred. Way overpriced. Uh, should we? Uh, <clears throat> should we do the top ten before we get into the MIR, or should we do it after? Yeah, what are you talking about, though? Uh, yeah, let's do the top ten before we get into the MIR. So people from the BCMG, STLR, FTN, what is it? No, BCMG. You had BCMG, it with the, first four. the Blue Collar Media Group, asked us to come up. Did you just fart? No, no. I, I, Dude, yeah, that was just not a fart. That was something. a shit. <laughs> nope. Yeah, you did. I saw it in your eyes. <laughs> Scott always gets the sneak pre- yeah. preview. <laughs> uh, they asked us to come up with a list of our top ten favorite football movies. Uh, at first, we thought this was pretty difficult because there's a lot of bad to mediocre football movies. Probably don't deserve to be on a top 10 list. But I think by the end of it, we may have came up with 10. There's going to be some arguments at the end. but We do have to put them in order. We do. Oh, come on. Yeah, can we I, just go 6 through 9 and then... I can just rip my list and then we can argue off of it. Yeah, let's, let's do, do it. that. That's, That's perfect. Fair. Do that. Because so, uh, I think we have a pretty solid... I got a couple on there that might not make stars list that I'm going to argue to get on there. All right, let's yeah. hear it. I mean, you can argue with me, and I could agree with you, but then we'd both be wrong, so... <laughs> stars first list is not the end-all, be-all. Uh, we'll and and honorable mention, I have the garbage-picking, field-goal-kicking Philadelphia Phenomena, which I think was a made-for-TV movie starring Tony Danza, but didn't make the top ten list. At number ten, I have Rudy. <laughs> Slightly overrated, but still good flick. Ooh, uh, same reasons that I had Jeez. bad thoughts. Just hearing the real story of Rudy. I got you. Me. Yeah, I agree. Rudy's like honorable mention tennis area. He's showing off my you. New Balance collection. <laughs> yeah, you are. That's going to be you Thursday, man. Fuck uh, yeah. At number nine, I have We Are Marshall. Is my mic working all right? Yeah, it it we hear you just fine. Yeah. Um. We are Marshall Marshall at nine. I'd probably go a little higher with it, but your top ten is right. I didn't like it the first time I saw it, and on yeah, definitely grew on me on multiple viewings. I think it was just too sad, and there's a lot going on in the first time. That's got uh, Jack (laughs) from Lost in it and Matthew McConaughey. Ooh, Jack from Lost. Deep Uh, pull, water pull. (laughs) Number eight, I have The Blind Side. Good movie. um, Eight might be a little low. A little low. So you guys will just have to argue over yeah, the ones we'll that are higher. I hear the, the rest thing. of all yeah, the yeah. there. Uh, obviously, cool story. Michael Orr's story. Big Mike, but don't call him that. He don't like it. <laughs> um, True stories are awesome. Yeah, the Tui family, I believe, uh, adopts him, brings him in, gets him successful in life, puts him on a path to help him become successful. He obviously did a lot of it on his own. Yes. Don't give too much credit to the white lady. But takes him in from a pretty horrible situation, so. True. Uh, at number <laughs> Sandra Bullock like that? seven, I got Waterboy. <laughs> so the two E's, she was on, have you guys ever watched the show Below Deck? No. no. It's like a reality show where they go on yacht tours. So that was a joke you just said. About what? It didn't sound like a joke. The horrible white lady? Yeah. I didn't call her horrible. No, he just said the white lady. I said, said don't, don't give, don't give all of the credit to the white lady. Yeah. Oh. I just thought you were trying to demean Sandra Bullock. 
Yeah, that's, that's oh, she, oh, she looked great she was in, in it. that blind movie. <laughs> Not the blind side, the other one. What was that? Don't look. Look away. Get out. The box. The box. It was hide your kids, hide your wife, hide your children. It was not of called course, any of those. Of course, Gage knows the box. Bird box, dude. Bird box. Talking about <laughs> angry so beavers and rug rats. Of course, he knows the box. What Fucking bird box, bro. And it's a good movie. Fair. Bird box. I knew it was box. I was close. He's uh, His mind is on it. Smash box. Tongue puncher. Fart box. Uh, seven and six, I have a tie. They're the two comedies Three on my beers. list. Who would it? I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, who was six? Seven, seven and six were ties. Uh, the two comedies that made the list are Waterboy and The Replacements. Ooh, I couldn't wow, really put yeah. one above the other because they're both pretty classic, and I watch every time they're on. Uh, Legends. What is the quote Keanu says? Uh, Chicks dig scars. Legends never die. Something along that line. Something lasts forever. Heroes yeah. last forever. Heroes last forever. I don't know. Obviously, I haven't seen it a ton. It's At Waterboy, everyone's seen those movies more than once. Oh, no. Never mind. Terrific. Never mind. Uh, number five. This gets into my real top five. I kind of <laughs> had to stretch for those other ones. Uh, I got Varsity Blues. Very good movie. Five Moxon. All right. The introduction of the uh, whipped cream. Bikini. I think. Game changer. <laughs> Super game changer. Everyone was wearing those after that. It was a trend setting. You did not want to see Star at a bar on a Friday <laughs> night because Star was developing. nothing but whipped cream. No, cherry on top, baby. <laughs> he looked like the Michelin man. Are you did trying you... to Google it right now? There's, no. I got them all wiped off the internet. <laughs> They're clear. My lawyers cleaned that shit up for me. It was a weird time. What, did with you... like a cloth? Did you like the post from the butthole about cherry pie the other day? I did. <laughs> and it made me want to dance. All right, so that's five. I told you about it. Yep. Uh, number four, I have Friday Night Lights. Uh, Booby Miles, probably one of my favorite characters in a football movie. Uh, the coach, Billy Bob Thorne, did a great job. Mm. And knowing that it was a real story without a happy ending, spoiler alert, made it all the better for me. You really felt like you're from small town Texas and this is all you cared about and you got sad. Heartbroken. I just watched uh, that one the other day. Number three. And the TV show, very different. Yeah, it so, was very, very different. So but you, they're both good. They're both. The the movie's a little bit more serious. Yep. And, you know, the characters aren't the same in the TV show as they are in the movie. But just it's which still, do you prefer? I loved the TV show. I did, too. Yeah. I think they're they're too different to compare one over the other as far as which is better. Yeah. But uh, that TV show is great. I love the TV show. My rule of thumb with TV versus movie is if they're equally as good, give me the TV show every time because there's more. There's more content there. That's fair. Uh, number three, totally I fair. got Any Given Sunday. which is so Old timer. I, and you moving up. I think I know the one you guys are going to want to move down. But Any Given Sunday, I got a three. Uh, Jamie Foxx. The young yeah. guy. It's arguably the best football movie of all time. Yeah. We don't think Willie that. Beeman. I was trying to think of his name. Yeah, Willie Steven Beeman. Willie Beeman <laughs> comes in, takes the job from the old guy. Al Pacino's great, and then Cameron Diaz looking good, as always. Uh, number two, I have The Express. This is the one I figured you guys would think I have too high, but I love this movie. We did the review on it earlier. It's the Ernie Davis story. It's a slow burn, but great story, and... I've probably watched it at least five times. Number one, with a bullet. I think we all agree on this. Maybe not Gage. Remember the Titans. My favorite movie of all time it has to be my favorite football movie. All right, so you got one right. We can work down from there. All right. That's fair. Varsity Blues was in the right spot. Everything else, trash. Throw it out the window. <laughs> <laughs> you think, Brandon? Uh, no, Remember the Titans is it's an all-time banger. It's yep. got to be number one. I, I, mean, he had, I had the Express it too, and I knew that, that was the one, one that like. you guys weren't going to be as high on me. Even that's more a personal <laughs> thing that I really loved that movie. This man was willing to step up to the microphone and name his top ten movies. Let's respect the fact that he was going to no, put that no. at number two. I just, and I'm ready for a debate. Let's remember. I didn't, I didn't read it thinking it was the end all be all. You list. know what? It I'm is gonna. Top. I am not going to debate you on that because I think your list is pretty solid. It's a solid list. It, it's tough to argue other stuff. You know, it'd be no. personal preference. Did I miss anything that you guys think should be on the list? No. Jerry yeah. Maguire. Jerry Little Maguire's Giants. Little Giants, yard. maybe. 
The I, longest yard is not a top Personally, 10. the longest yard for me hits a top 10. I would take that over the, the two comedies. The old one or the new one? The new one. With mm-hmm. Nelly, yeah. Adam Sandler. Phil and there's, a, there's a lot Steve of Bobby. classic old movies that I haven't seen. That I'd never seen Brian's song. Mm-hmm. I'd never seen... Uh, there, it was an old comedy one. I said the name right before we started this. Uh, unnecessary, unnecessary <laughs> Roughness. Uh, I did watch the program. I thought that one was overrated for everyone who thinks the program's great. But I, I'm going to be invincible. right back, but I have to run through a few things before you guys move on to another topic. Oh, yeah, sure. Just take the mic time. I'm definitely going to. Um, let's see. All doing? right, and that's enough said, of that. Okay, yeah, so over. going into this movie interview. First off, <laughs> the game plan with The Rock it's not a top ten football no. movie. It's not no. even a top no. two football movie for The Rock. Well, it's, that's a good <laughs> fucking point. Well, that's because Gridiron, Gridiron Gang, Gang needs to there. be on there too. First, okay, last my last butthole beef with your list is you did not have the Turkey Bowl on there. Oh, the Turkey Bowl. <laughs> you know, so, I, I if that I've does not reach ten, try to forget that I watched that movie. <laughs> it was not that bad. You could have watched Hubie Halloween again. Oof. Okay. Yeah, you know, I could have watched Uncut do. Gems. No shit. I liked Uncut Gems more than Turk Bowl. I don't know That's if my score bullshit. reflected it, but... No, it didn't. <laughs> What'd I give the Turkey Bowl? You gave like a 7-5? Bullshit. 8 Yeah, you were in the 8s, I think. Yeah, you, <laughs> you were at least a 6-9. You pulled the whole average. Yeah, dude, you fucking ra- you raised it. You're like, I your like whole it. idea of not checking and not knowing what your scores are and other stuff ain't working well. I d- I'm a new person each day. Your number three movie is Turkey Day. Turkey Day. Turkey Bowl. It's a completely Turkey different Bowl. movie. Turkey, Bowl. Turkey Day is his number three holiday. Number one. <laughs> Fuck that. As you get old, Thanksgiving is by far the best holiday. Well, when there's three football games on, hard it's tough to beat. Uh, the Turkey Bowl, Star Lamar gave it. Did you really give it that? <laughs> oh, that's a typo. <laughs> that's definitely a typo. Uh, Hubie Halloween, you gave a 4 9. What's the typo what? say? Why did I? <laughs> he gave it a five nine. Fuck. Yeah, that's what he gave it. Yeah. No, we're just kidding. No, yeah. Turkey Bowl. He gave a five nine. Yeah, I know. That's what he gave it. No, yeah, we're right. serious no. about the five nine, but we're just kidding about that typo. Like we're just like, oh, it, it oh. had to be higher than that. Oh, yes. No. Oh, he was probably still the highest on it though, right? Let's see things. That He's you... definitely the highest. <laughs> just look at him. <laughs> man. Uh, no, Gage. Shut up, man. Gage, you gave it a seven five. A turkey bowl. That ain't <laughs> real, dog. That ain't, ain't look, real. Look on Gage's face right now. He's trying Stop to give that. me shit. <laughs> he just had a look on his face like Brandon came down from upstairs and told him, Hey, Gage, your angry beaver's here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, you did a really good list. I mean, you could, like I said, personal preference, I might put Invincible and uh, Longest Yard in there. Yeah. But I don't have any complaints about your list whatsoever. So should we get to the movie in review? Let's do it. It was yeah. Gage's pick. It was my pick. Tombstone was the choice. It's a classic. Star kind of brought it on me because he asked what my top movies would be. And similar to this question from Blue Collar Media Group. Uh, you kind of you got to think about it because you don't want to go on record with something that you regret. And, uh, you know, watching it again, it probably doesn't hit my top five like I had said originally. But it it still has a spot in my top it's, yeah. ten. And it sounds like there's like more to just the movie, like your memories of watching the movie when you were younger and stuff. Yep. It can definitely have an effect on Absolutely. how you view it as far as your overall likeness of it. Yep. Yeah. But uh, as it as it is, it's the Wyatt Earp story. They had moved to Tombstone, Arizona with his two brothers. Uh shoot off the top of my head, I forget their well, names. Well the, the opening of the movie <clears throat> was they basically said that is the creation of cowboys. And yes, they said the cowboys that, are the guys that are wearing the red sashes. Yeah, it said they were the first organized, Virgil and Morgan. organized crime in the United States, which was bullshit because politicians have been here from the beginning. But that's true. That's for another podcast. <clears throat> That'll be a butthole after dark thing. Yeah. Yes. So they they got crowned the first organized crime in America, even though I don't believe that the ca- cowboys and uh, star studded cast. Yes, there's. Uh, I mean, it, it was filmed in 93, and you have got your pick of the litter, Kurt Russell, um, Val Kilmer, Sam Elliott. S- yeah, Sam Elliott. Sam I mean, Elliott's a stud. Bill Paxton. <clears throat> and then uh, I was asking my dad, some of the guys, uh, one guy that came across my head, uh, my mind was Charlton Heston. 
I think he played so the, the Henry Apes. Henry Farm guy. Yeah, he was the original player of the Apes. He's he's a solid actor yeah. back in the sixties. The dude who played the uh, main cowboy has been in some stuff. He was in Sin City, and uh, also I'm thinking of the really smooth faced cowboy with the really like good smile. The one that uh, he was wearing his around his scarf. And Huckleberry. He uh, not the whole, maybe no. So I'd go down on the IMDb list here because there's Powers Booth is who I was thinking of. That dude's the one who's it. He's like the main cowboy, but he plays a bad guy in a lot of stuff. He yes. was in Sin City. He's like the leader guy that he goes against. <clears throat> and he was in his JCVD movie, so I'm sure I've seen that. <laughs> yeah, was he in uh, George of the Jungle? Uh, I couldn't tell you. I don't believe so. <laughs> so, yeah, the Wyatt Earp, his bros, their ladies, moved to Tombstone, Arizona to kind of start anew. Yep, they're trying to retire from the sheriff life, and uh, they're looking for just easy, or not easy jobs, but just an easy living. They're trying to just live be life. Officer like, anymore. be low profile and live life. Yep, let the, <laughs> let the lobby its own thing, and they can do their own. So they run into Tombstone, Arizona. And this is where they're going to set up shop. Uh, they have a really good situation. There's a, a corner bar that was all run down with one stupid-ass cowboy. Or, or not a cowboy, but just a... The dealer. Yep, the dealer was rigged, and the guy that was his buddy was just a jackass and basically talked everyone out of that bar. So first thing why it does, rolls right into that bar, kicks the dummy out of there, kicks the dealer out, and says he's going to be the dealer. Brings in all the new business and gets a, a stake in the, the bar's cut, basically. Bad fucking ass. <laughs> I mean, first five minutes in town, he's getting 25% profit of the, the bar and bring it back. So uh, it's not long after that, you know, you could tell Wyatt just can't stop stirring up this trouble everywhere he goes. He, he needs to be involved. <laughs> if he sees someone doing wrongdoing, he's once a lawman, always a lawman. Which yep. I didn't know the story of Wyatt or prior to this. Oh. I always pictured he was a cowboy. He was like an outlaw or something. Oh, really? Like Just that name alone. I didn't know anything about him. Well, Same with was... Doc Holliday. Like, all of them. I just pictured him as Billy the Kid, Wyatt Earp. I didn't know any of them were good guys. Yeah, they kind of... It was kind of tough to tell who the good guys and the bad guys were, you know? Yeah. Because the cowboys kind of were... They had their own reasons for doing stuff, but they weren't always, like you said, with the best intention. Whereas the sheriffs... And... and uh it, was it the sheriffs or what was their actual title? They were U.S. Um, US marshals. marshals. Yes. The sheriff is actually the local level where the marshals were across all the land, I think. Yeah. So those sheriffs correct. had those opportunities to be infiltrated with some of these cowboys or some of these guys that just didn't have all the best intentions, which kind of comes up in this movie. So the sheriff uh, is kind of a, just a big... F- Pansy, I don't know what else you'd call him. He's he's a bitch. He's always acting like he's the the his word is the law. But I mean, this sheriff, he always he was a blister. He showed up as soon as the work was done. Yeah. So he'd always be coming around the corner and trying to enforce laws and take people's guns away once they did outlaw guns. But I'm kind of skipping ahead here. <laughs> so with the new uh, bar crowd, uh, a New show comes into town, and then the lead dancer, the lead singer, is just a smoke show. Uh, I forget her name. That uh, Josephine, yeah, Wyatt Earp had kind of struggled. Like yeah. there was love at so first sight, and I, while I was watching it, thought that she had ill intentions. <laughs> I didn't she trust it because no he was married. Yeah, right. <clears throat> yep. Was she, or was that like her boss or something that she kept talking to? So, I think it was tough to tell, but the relationship did seem like they were, uh, like, just together for not the good reasons, you yeah. know? And when they they started talking about Wyatt Earp, and I was like, oh, they're going to scam him, or they're working for someone else, and I, I guess I did, his entire love story in it, I was not a fan of. Yeah, you know, it, it was kind of like he married and was trying to settle down and have a family, and uh, that idea just kind of never sat with him. You know, yeah. like he was trying to buy into something he didn't actually believe in. Because he, Cause he liked monogamous. Yes. Yeah, yeah that idea when, when they do actually start to talk, him and Josephine, 
she's like, I just want to go town to town, hotel to hotel, and live off, you know, room service. Yeah. He brings that right back to his wife, and she's just laughs in his face, like, "What are you talking about?" Yeah. We can't live off room service, so. Uh, yeah, Josephine definitely was love at first sight, and Wyatt had had a real tough time <laughs> seeing him, like, giving her the cold shoulder because uh, his brother Virgil was kind of giving him a hard, like, hey, here she comes, what are you going to do? He's like, what, what should I do? Just ignore her is what Virgil says, and he's like, okay. And he does it no problem, but she has a fluff, with, or she has an issue with it. And There you go with fluff again. <laughs> I've said it like 10, 17 times since you've been gone. Really? You got a fluffer, fluffer nutter. <laughs> but uh, then the Cowboys come back and they're trying to get their oh, way dude. back at that bar. I have a badass. I, you can keep going. I have a badass <laughs> fucking idea for draft night for how we're going to hang that fucker. You're on a, a mic right now. Yeah, it's going to be here. Do you want to just write it down in your phone and then we can talk about it later? Let's, let's chat after this one. Yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll reconvene. <laughs> So what is just because you weekend. take your headphones off doesn't mean it just your mic you. Off. <laughs> you guys keep going. I you love the enthusiasm. <laughs> okay, well, fuck. Back to the movie and review. Here we go. <laughs> he forgot that he's How just supposed to sit there and not do anything. Wyatt Earp had gone into the corner <laughs> bar and taken over, uh, taken the old the bad dealer out and got the twenty five percent. Oh yeah, badass move. And Goes then Josephine in there and just slaps the bitch around. <laughs> yeah. Like fuck that dude. What are you gonna do? He's like, you ain't gonna shoot me. Get out of here. <laughs> and then Josephine comes into town and plays the show. Yeah, kind of love at first sight with Wyatt. And then uh, that's where we were at. Okay. So it's kind of Cowboys came back. Yep, yep. And they're it's causing some trouble. We we haven't even talked about Doc. Yes, Doc kind of was on Doc holiday yet. No. <laughs> Doc was kind of on his own mission. Him and his wife or girlfriend, uh, they're uh, kind of mistress. Actually, I looked into Doc holiday. It was, I think, a prostitute he met in like St. Louis. They knew each other for a little bit, and then they met up again later. And she followed him. To Must have life. been why he was sweating so much the whole movie. Could have been the tuberculosis. Tuberculosis. No, I think it was whatever the prostitute gave him, but. <laughs> We'll agree to disagree. Oh she man, gave that him prostitute was. <laughs> so, Imagine the gnarly shit back oh, in the day. I mean, the hygiene was just terrible. You're not supposed to live past like 25. No, no. Wyatt Earp lived. Uh, 40. He. Wyatt Earp died in like 1926. Yeah, he was born in 18 something, right? Yeah, but uh, Doc Holliday died in like the 80s, and he died at 36. Oh, okay. So then they were. I mean, that was that had to have been the... How old was Wyatt Earp? 80. 80. 80? He Woo. lived to 80. That's a long age for a guy back in the, the Especially 1800s. Especially for him, man. That's, uh, so the Tombstone story, these guys have got other movies about them and their life. These guys were real. I mean... But the OK Corral was like the biggest battle, the biggest fight. Like, that's what put Wyatt Earp, I think, <clears throat> on, on the map. That's a big fight that happened back there. The OK Corral? Yep. Against these Cowboys? Against the Cowboys, yep. Him and Doc knew each other. Once they saw each other, it was like they old friends. They had cross paths, yep. Yeah. Uh, Doc Holliday saved Wyatt Earp's life in Texas. That's where they first met. I don't exactly know how. Because what's his deal? He's not a cowboy, but he's not Earp. a lawman. Holiday. Doc. So Doc Holliday, he grew up in Georgia. And I think he, he's a troubled kid, but then he went to like some sort of like... I don't know if it was like military school type deal, but back in the day. And he actually went to be a dentist. And then his mom died, and his mom got tuberculosis. Is that why his name's Doc? Or is his actual name Doc? His actual name's not Doc. Is it because he's a dentist? I think it's Henry. Mm -hmm. Pretty sure it's Henry. Um, So I think that's where he got it, but he only went there for a few years. Then he bounced around and became a professional gambler. Like, that was an actual job back in the day. Yeah. Because he's good at cheating, probably. He's just a lucky guy outside of the tuberculosis. John Henry Doc Holiday. He's yeah, a, and you and you saw that. That's what he was doing. He was winning card games somewhere yeah. else with his mistress, and uh, kind of being shooed out after he gets too lucky. One eight in a row. <laughs> and I mean, they did measure it weird. Later on, Doc has another uh, scene where he's doesn't want to leave the card table, and his TB is kind of getting really bad. And he's on a 17-card hand win streak. He's on a 36-hour bender. 
Yeah, it was insane. So and his girl's like, he don't need to go to sleep. Doc oh. can do what he wants to. That girl Star, was you say no it, you good. You can say it in a sexier voice than I can. No. Later on, when uh, he gets checked up, and the doc's like, the actual doctor is checking on Doc. He's like, oh yeah, your tuberculosis is bad. I I wouldn't get out of bed. You need rest. And he's like, I'll get out of here. <laughs> and then his girl, the mistress comes in and she just gives him a cigarette right away. <laughs> like, smoke this, drink this. You're healthy, yeah, right? Something You'll be else fine. Too. You'll yeah. be fine. <laughs> I Doc, knew that Doc didn't know what he was saying. I think I like Doc Holiday. Probably, he's probably my favorite character. He's just, he looked like a grease ball. And you knew from the beginning that, like, something was up. Like, yeah. he's sweating profusely. And it's not just because he's getting drunk. He's super pale. Yeah. And same with Wyatt, Wyatt's wife. You know, she's got some sort of illness or something. And Is that what it was, or was she just an addict? Well, she became an addict because she... this medicine was just supposed to be for migraines or headaches. And, you know, Wyatt's trying to be a, a little bit of a counselor or whatever. And, hey, are you, is that the second bottle you got now, or is that still the first one? He's trying to help, but she's just... Doing the cowgirl life, you know. I mean, there's what they do. They just sat there and did dishes and a I lot would, of girl time. Uh, yeah, a lot just easy. You didn't have to do anything. No, uh, I mean, that's you wake up, you go win seventeen card games, and you go bang your hooker. <laughs> well, see, and that's where it was a lot. I mean, there wasn't fucking work for women. That they were just sex workers. If they didn't have a wealthy husband that could prepare for or provide for him, or or if they made it in singing or some sort of other, well, yeah, because that Josephine show. chick was, she was like a, a steam head. She didn't abide by what other people wanted her to be. She was like, "I'm just gonna do what I want. I don't give a shit. I'm gonna die someday." Yep. And later on, you find out that she comes from a family of money, so she didn't really have to worry about that sort of make, stuff. Yeah, which may have helped a easier. And this is a totally different time. The 1800s, uh, who I watched with, they're like, oh, I can't, it was their first time. I'm like, how, how are they missing these shots? Like, oh, they're shooting without looking. I'm like, that's a better shot than looking sometimes. These guns were so inaccurate. I mean, you could be our distance away and still miss with your pistol. Not Doc, though. Doc could. <laughs> Doc was a different deal, man. a fly man. off a dick from 100 yards. <laughs> Guarantee it. Doc's care. Oh, he's just such a great character. That, I think that actor played it perfectly too. The, the sickness, the grease ball you're seeing of him. I mean, he was a, uh, and he had a wild streak in him too. I, I watched a documentary on him after the episode, and when he was younger, so there was a part in the movie where there's a duel, and the guy's like, "I play for blood." Doc's like, "All right, let's do it," and the guy's like. Nah, all right, I wanted to fight him, so he didn't fight Doc. But when Doc was younger, there was a kid and a group of kids wanted to do a duel. And so they were just going to load up fake pretend guns with gunpowder, not actually have anything in it. Doc showed up, said, I want to bring my own gun. Doc was ready there to legitimately duel and shoot this kid with a real, <laughs> gun. With a real gun. And the other kid was like, no, like I... I didn't actually want to do that. He backed out, but like Doc from the beginning as a kid was like fucking wild card. Risked his life the whole way through. And back, like you're saying back then watching it, people got shot in the street in the bar. Nothing. You just went on. Drag him out. Nothing happened. (laughs) Because was it, uh, what was the dude's name? It wasn't, was it Ike? Yes. One of the head cowboys. Billy something, but they called him Ike. Yeah. So, was he the one who got drunk that night and shot the sheriff in the street? Yes, so I he did just kill the sheriff. he got just hammered. It's like I feel great, and then he goes out into the street and he's just shooting his gun through stores at people's feet. And then the sheriff confronts him, and the sheriff didn't want to. They wanted to send Wyatt Earp out there to do it. He's like, Nah, I ain't gonna do that shit. Like I'm here to make money. I don't give a shit about the law. Like that's your job. So he goes out there. And uh, I was looking at the IMDb here, no, the actors. Um, so he goes out Avatar. there and he shoots the sheriff right in the chest, kills him in the street. But since nobody saw it actually happen, they just saw him stand around him after the gunshot went off. The judge wouldn't convict him, and the guy got to walk free. Like just a fucking crazy time that that type of shit could happen in mm. the Wild West. <laughs> yep, that's what it was. Literally, what it was. 
Yeah, and that, uh, I mean, those Cowboys, they ran it until they fucked with the wrong guys, right? Yep. So it wasn't until they started messing with, uh, like, innocent people. Like, I think it was um, Sam Elliott's character, Virgil, saved, like, a kid from being trampled when they were running through town with their horses. And then that's when he took up the pledge to be a U.S. Marshal and try and bring the law to Tombstone. And get these cowboys at least to take their freaking shooting out of uh, the the public's way. Earp was pissed. <laughs> yeah, he, he wanted was nothing to do with it. Done with it. Wyatt was not happy. And it's a little surprising because he was pegged as this. He was a lawman back in like Oklahoma or something, right? Yeah, everywhere they went, it was Texas, Oklahoma. I think he he brought the law everywhere he went, and he wanted to get away from that. He just wanted to make money. They were they were retiring, hanging up the guns, and they were just gonna. He took leave. over that the dealer at the <clears throat> the saloon. Took twenty five percent. He then wanted to open a racetrack right away. After that, after that, he wanted to do a billiards room, grow the town. Yep, he just wanted to make money, sell it for a profit, and go to the next town. Yep, which is surprising from a guy that brought law to the town. Like, you don't think that really leaves somebody. You know what I mean? Yeah, and the way he shook it up, you know, as soon as he got in there getting the dealer out and the way he uh, approached problems, it, it didn't leave his lifestyle. No. You know, as much as he didn't want to do it, everything, all of his actions brought him to become... Full circle. A U.S. Marshal as well. So Sam Elliott, Virgil Earp, signs up to be the Marshal, and one of the first things he does is get to the, the other brother... Morgan. Um, Morgan to be a marshal as well, and then Wyatt's basically like, "Well, I'm I gotta be, a, I gotta join you guys. I can't leave you hanging." Well, that was after because the Cowboys, Ike was part of them. Yes, and Ike was a bitch. Yes, he would threaten to kill them, and then he would get thrown in jail, and mm-hmm. he'd act, you know, all scared, whatever. I'm not gonna do it, whatever. Leave you get his let drunk me live. Courage. And then he would go back to the Cowboys, and then he would threaten to kill him again. Like, they let that happen a ton of times. Oh, yeah. And after he got let out of jail, which was thrown in by Morgan, or by uh, Virgil. Virgil yep. threw him in jail for, I don't know, having a gun in the street or being drunk. It or... was after he had passed the, the gun-free. It wasn't gun-free, but you just said you couldn't bring your guns into a building. So you could have them out in the streets, but you can't bring them into bars bring them into the card rooms, they stay outside. And after he passed that and he threw Virgil, or not Virgil, Ike <laughs> Ike was jail. all drunk and he was talking shit. He's like, if I had my gun, I'd shoot him in the street. And Virgil was right behind him and just clocked him. Because I think Wyatt Earp had an altercation with Ike at the card table. Yep. He left and then the he guy... He wasn't leaving, he was getting his guns and Earp, shit. No, Earp left. And then yep. Ike grabbed the guns from the bartender and he's talking shit to the bartender and he's like... He better watch his back in the street because I'll shoot him. And then Virgil smacked him over the head yep. and put him in jail. <clears throat> and then once he got out of jail, the Cowboys and them were like, we're coming for you tonight. You better watch yourself. Yeah, because they felt like he was jailed uh, without reason, without cause. Exactly. And the Cowboys do have each other's back. The opening scene, they roll through a small town and kill everyone in it because they killed one or two of their guys. Yeah, there was two... two Two scarfs hanging, and they they needed to be repaid. Yep. <clears throat> so the Cowboys also had some guys that were in with the sheriffs, right? There was the one uh, sheriff that was a little nerdier looking. And so when you were talking about uh, who was the showgirls? Je- Josephine. Josephine's husband or that character. Yep. I think he was gay. I don't think back in the 1880s, being gay was very welcomed. So I think he had a secret relationship with this sheriff guy. Because when, well, spoiler, Josephine's husband is killed when they're on their way out of town by the cowboys. And then they pull back in. He's hanging out dead. And then that sheriff comes up and he's like, kind of reaches and grabs his hand. And then he gets all flustered like it's personal. Yeah. Well, that's where he said, we need some law. Exactly. Some law and order. And then he left the Cowboys group. Yes. Yep. So that was his kind of straw. But he was in with the Cowboys and uh, 
you know, telling them where the girls were. They kind of had that inside mole. So then uh, after Virgil had locked up Ike, they had really just gone full attack mode on it. So they send a, a shooter to go kill the girls, the, all the wives of the Earps. And thankfully, Josephine shows up last second and saves them before they all get blasted by a shotgun. Now, was yeah, that happened before the OK Corral, right? Uh, yes, yep, the OK Corral is the last last sh- showdown, I'd say. So this is where, th- I think this sets up the OK Corral, where uh, Virgil gets popped in the leg on a, another shady attack because he's kind of out on his own. The girls are attacked, and then Wyatt is with uh, Morgan playing billiards, and then Morgan gets popped in the back. Well, no, I think that happened after. That happened after. So the OK Corral happened. So the Cowboys were back behind the OK Corral. This was the day that Ike got out of jail. They said they were going to kill him. So then Doc Holliday got deputized as a marshal by Virgil, and then Earp joined him as well. And they were so they were all marshals. They went over there to take their guns, and that's when so Josephine was in the building right next to him, and so was her husband. And he's like, no, don't do it. They don't have any guns. They're unarmed, blah, blah, blah. They walk around the corner. They got guns, and they said, we don't want to kill you. We don't want to do anything. You got to put your guns down. Yep. And then they start to draw, and they shoot. They kill a couple of the cowboys. Virgil gets hit. Morgan gets hit as well. And then the, I don't remember, was it Ike? Ike put his gun down, like, don't shoot, don't shoot, don't shoot. This is where I'm saying he's like, he's all in it. And then once he gets his back up against the wall, because I don't know if you talked about the scene earlier where they're in the street and Ert puts the gun up to his head and he's like, I'm going to shoot you. Yeah, that was the scene I was just describing. Oh, well, no, because the scene where Virgil got injured was later. That was after the OK Corral. He just got shot like really low in the leg, right? And he had to walk. That was the at game. the fight, <clears throat> I okay. believe. Cause, so they fought, Ike went in, and then Ike started shooting out the window at them. Because... And it, because that's why they he had given Doc the shotgun was because he was on the cane, so he couldn't hold, hold the shotgun. I'm pretty sure Virgil got shot at the OK Corral. He was shot multiple times. Tough son of a bitch. Sam <laughs> Elliott's a tough son of a bitch. <laughs> Hell yeah. So they had that fight, and then they went back into their hotel. But that's when the Cowboys planned a night attack. Yes. So Virgil left the saloon to go back home. Yep. The, I don't know if the girls were attacked that night or if it was sooner. It might have been that night, and then I think they called it maimed. <clears throat> I don't know. I, I didn't look at the term. I don't know what it means, but I think they, like, sliced his arm, and Virgil wasn't able to use his arm anymore. Okay. And then after that, um, that's when Morgan got shot outside, yep. too. And then Morgan <clears throat> died on the table. Yep. Wyatt was trying to pull the bullet out. Yep. Couldn't get it. And then Wyatt absolutely snaps. It was over after that. No, no bringing him back. He was. He went on a. I'm going to take out all the cowboys rampage. So John Wick, Virgil, <laughs> yes, Virgil and the wives. They all leave town. They leave. They move to California. And, and Ike think, and the boys are trying to take him out on their way out. They send like Stallworth or Stainswell or whatever his name was, and Ike to go kill them on the train. And they're sitting outside the train. They're like, "Where is Erp? There's Virgil. I'll go get him. And then Earp shoots Stainwell or whatever the guy's name was from behind, and Ike is on the ground, like, begging for his life again. Again. Another situation. Yep. So he kind of takes his, the back of his uh, his spur on his boot, mm. slices his face a little bit, says, you go tell him that I'm coming for him. You're delivering the message. So they go back, and then that's when Earp and Doc Holliday and a couple other guys that wanted to see law in that town went after the Cowboys and attacked them. Yep, there was a couple cowboys earlier that were, uh, they were old friends of Wyatt, so they didn't pursue like all the other cowboys did. And then they had said after they had heard what had happened and attacking the wives, they're done. They're done with the cowboys, and they they are backing Wyatt no matter what. So these four go, go on a little renegade, take out a whole bunch of the cowboy crew, and then it ends uh, with a pretty pretty nasty shootout. Johnny Ringo, the number two guy is looking to get revenge for, um, effort. was it Deuce was his name? I don't remember who he, who he killed. The head cowboy, yeah. Bill. Oh, yeah, Curly Bill. Bill. Yep, yep. 
So yeah, Ringo was looking to get revenge for Bill, and he wanted just a, sh- a showdown with Wyatt Earp, and that's when Doc had come up and he wanted to challenge him for blood. And uh, the best line in the movie, he says it twice. I'm your Huckleberry. I'm your Huckleberry. <laughs> I googled it. Don't know what it means. Guess he actually said it in real life, but there's no real meaning. No one knows what he meant by it. That's why Doc was a badass. Left. I'm your Huckleberry. <laughs> The fuck are you talking about, Doc? Is it the drugs? <laughs> the oh, sickness? Yeah. yeah, it's the alcohol. Definitely. I'm just so, glad he said it twice. This is the first time I was like, oh, that was sweet. And then he did it again, the same guy. He's just nuts. It was there. He their, was. Ringo and Doc had, like, they're so sophisticated. You know, they would, when Doc is talking fucking Latin to him, when he first meets him, he's like, oh, he knows Latin. I got it. At least this is what it says when I Googled it. I googled, what does it mean to be somebody's huckleberry? In the Old West, being a huckleberry meant you were game or up for anything. Ooh, mm-hmm. that was Doc to a T. Yeah. He was Literally, everyone's so was like, huckleberry. You got a crazy idea. Let's fucking roll, baby. <laughs> I'm your huckleberry. And basically, probably because of Tom Sawyer, huckleberry Finn. <clears throat> that I'm before and, Oh, he kind of helps him with a whole bunch of tasks, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he does it all. So he's probably based off of the, the adventures book? of Tom Sawyer. Or yeah. the real guy. He probably knew him. Was it her real guy? <laughs> I don't know. I think Gage reads. Ask a college fucking graduate. <laughs> yeah, not a first semester <laughs> dropout over here. Uh, but it, God, I got some wicked ass <sighs> fucking allergies going on right now. <laughs> Is the OK Corral the last showdown? That's so the OK Corral was the big fight. Was then at the bar, that's where then he, the guys died. Yes, so yep. that's when Morgan died and Virgil left. And then after Virgil left, that's when Wyatt, Wyatt went on renegade. the rampage of just killing the Cowboys. Whoa. They ran Whoa. through. They hung him in the streets. They shot him uh, off horses running, you know, far away. Um, and then they ended up getting pinned down on a riverbank. Yes. Yep. And, and that's where Bill is. And once once Wyatt knows Bill is there, he just goes all out akimbo. Magnums. Just start shooting. He's hitting everything. <laughs> he fucking hit every shot. Yeah, you, you can't hit somebody six yards away, but he's hitting him in the woods a hundred yards away. Just popping Behind the him. trees. And so <clears throat> was it uh was that when Bill Curly Bill walked out into the river they and he's shooting out. at him and <clears throat> he pops him in the head. Yep. Kills him. And even Wyatt or uh, Doc Holiday was like I, I, you guys ever seen anything like that before? <laughs> it was. A, I've never seen anything like that before. Even Doc was amazed by what he just saw. So this is when Johnny Ringo gets word that Bill is dead. He is in charge of the Cowboys now. And he, and wants, he wants revenge. He wants 1v1 rust. Yep. So Wyatt hears downwind, you know, the, co- the, the two Cowboys that had b- backed him said, hey, we got your back, but this is kind of like a suicide mission. We're going into, they want you to be there at 7 o'clock. And Doc is sick. Yep. The tuberculosis is kicking back up. He fell off his horse. They went to uh, the Hooker Ranch. Yes, the Hunter Henry, or Henry Hooker Ranch, played by Charlton Heston, an old-time actor. So they went to his ranch, and that's where Doc was getting, like, um, resting. Yep. Yep. Trying to just rest up. And he apparently faked his sickness a little bit more, and he showed up to the duel. Yeah, with, so Wyatt's uh, Ringo kind of last last deal was he just wanted to talk to Doc, and Doc's like, "You can't beat him." <laughs> and Doc Wyatt's like, "Well, I got to try," and leaves on that kind of just this gloom. Leaves the badge. Oh yeah, he did leave it for Doc. That was a pretty touching scene. And then he he he's getting all ready to go to that showdown seven o'clock in the morning. And it cuts over to uh, our boy, Johnny Ringo. And he's going to meet up at the spot. And who does he come across in his path? Mr. Doc Holliday. And Ringo was the one who wanted to play for blood earlier. Yes. And that's when he said, I'm your Huckleberry to start. That was the first time he said it. Yep. And Ringo didn't want to do it. He didn't want to fight Doc. He had respect for Doc. He's like, my, 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 my fight is not with you. I want to take out Wyatt. Eventually they agreed to it, and Doc took him out. Doc, yeah, totally talked him into it. Smooth played him, like, oh, were you scared? You know, kind of got his emotions into it, Ringo's, and, yeah, took the better of him. 
He's got the quickest hands, man. Was Ringo the one at the bar earlier where he did the fancy stuff, spinning the gun back and forth on his hands? And, and then Doc his, pulls out his, his, his whiskey cup. And just fakes, <laughs> puts it back. Yeah. <laughs> He's doing the noises, too. He was... <laughs> that, that was Everyone's a, just laughing. That was a funny <laughs> scene. Doc is that... Oh, Val Kilmer playing Doc. I don't think he can get much better than that. That He played it great. I love that role. That's my favorite character. Oh, sorry. So Ringo is taken out. Uh, Wyatt comes up, and I think Doc did take a shot in that showdown, right? Doc killed him. Yeah, but But he did did get get shot shot in the duel, right? I don't know. Did he? I think he did. And then he, because then it, it takes, it picks up where he's at the hospital. Doc is at the hospital. Oh, I thought he went back because the, the tuberculosis. Yeah, yeah. I that got bad. Maybe he did get shot. I think he did get shot too. So then, um, they're playing cards, and I think uh, Erp keeps going back to play cards with him. Yep. And keeping Doc track it, in a book of what he owes him. Yep. And Doc's like. I don't, you know, if you're my friend, you're not going to come back here. Like, you'll leave and you won't come back, you know. You if you ever live. cared about me, you're going to just leave right now. Go live your life. Let me die. So, Doc, you Take did, your precious Josephine. <laughs> I, I think Doc did die of tuberculosis. Yep. Was his, his death. Yep. So, the gun wound wasn't what it was. No. Yeah. Um, And he died, at, like I said, it was like 36 years old in the 1880s or something like that. <clears throat> so... Uh, lived a short life, but he's a badass. That's he made the he, most he of died it. in a sanatorium in Colorado. Mm-hmm. Oh. And then Wyatt Earp went back to Josephine. His wife ended up ODing. I don't know if that was after he met up with Josephine. Or it was, yeah, after. Probably because of it. Well, I mean, a little dark, he, but he I sent mean, her away. They never knew what was going to happen after that. When he when Wyatt's staying back to get revenge for his brother. You could tell he was out. It could be a death mission. Like, he didn't want to be with her anymore, especially after seeing Josephine. You, you knew it was over, mm-hmm. and you could tell from the beginning that they were playing up that she, was, she wasn't she was going to make it either. <clears throat> yep. And uh, he goes up to Josephine, asks for the dance, which is what he stood her up the first time that he saw her or met her. He didn't ask for a dance, and she was kind of appalled. So he asked for a dance, and she's... All happy about it? She and... said, I'm your Huckleberry. <laughs> <laughs> all in all, it's a great Western film. It's an old one, but I think it holds up, and it's got a special place in my heart, so I'm a fan. I'm not like a Western film aficionado by any means, but this is one of my favorite Western films. When yeah. I saw 93, I was leery going into it. God, we are the same person. I, I mean, think about it. A movie from 1993. It's, it's older than us. They're outdated. <laughs> Anything I mean? older than 2000, and I'm like... I don't know. Toy Story? I get real skeptical. <laughs> That's fair. I'm like, I don't know. But, but this movie, I'd, I've seen this movie quite a few times. I love it. It held up very, very well. Yeah, Jurassic opinion. Park. Well, duh. That came out in 93. I know it did. The Fugitive. Groundhog's Day. Yeah, I know. Days been confused. <laughs> Mrs. Doubtfire. Nightmare Before Christmas. Did you see Mrs. Doubtfire? There's an R-rated version of that. There's not actually an R-rated version of it. Though. They claim that there is an R-rated version of that movie. They just said that Robin Williams ad-libbed so much that there could be an R-rated version okay, with the fine. footage Fuck that they me. had. There, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if there's an R-rated adult film of Mrs. Doubtfire. Star would know if there is one. I haven't came across it yet. Have you searched for it? So probably, hey, so probably, so probably not there. Yeah, if Star doesn't know about it, he doesn't have to search. Okay, I don't. Isn't there a rule that like if it exists, there's a porn made of it? I, that's a good rule of thumb. I I, 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 I would be willing to bet there's a Mrs. Doubtfire porn episode. Isn't it more like there's like two thirds of all the internet usage is you for watch porn? It? No, not unless it's like anal fisting. Then I might be into it. <laughs> Rule thirty four. <laughs> the look on Gage's face alone from me saying that was totally worth. He's it. like, I'm your Huckleberry. I'm in the wrong <laughs> categories. It says Rule thirty four is an internet maxim, whatever the fuck that is, which asserts that internet pornography exists concerning every conceivable topic. The concept is comically depicted as fan art of normally non erotic subjects engaging in sexual behavior. Rule thirty four. If it exists, there's porn about it. That's, I mean, I believe it. 
<laughs> should we get back to scores? On I this? believe it too. Forms. We should create a butthole numbers list, like rules list. Ooh, butthole rule. Like, uh, like the bro book on how I met your mother. The bro code. Yeah. That's a good idea. We'll workshop it. Rule number one, we'll figure it yeah, out later. That could have been <laughs> the great idea of that Scott had mid podcast. It's possible. No, it wasn't. The mine wasn't mm-hmm. as good as that. Share but damn it, I was excited about it. Or should I let you all average me down first? I can go first. Yeah. Because I know mine's going to be low. Um, I was talking about it today at work and got yelled at by my coworkers. Oh, they're big fans of Tombstone. Yeah, they like shamed, they shamed me hard. Uh, but <laughs> and I, I can say before I give my score that I'm not a big Western person. <clears throat> I've never seen any of the old ones, the Clint Eastwoods or John Wayne movies. Um, I, I like Three Ten to Yuma is the only one that comes to my mind that I really liked, and the new one, not even the old one. Uh, but I'm going to give it a 6.5. It did nothing for me. It wasn't a bad movie, but... Western's not your style. Yeah, it's not one that... I mean, I kind of want to watch it again eventually after talking about it during <laughs> this. Because I feel like there's some stuff I missed. I might be wasn't paying the closest attention. But yeah, while I was watching, I just thought it was another movie. I do think Val Kilmer was awesome in it. I think he's the best part of it. Definitely. Yeah. It's tough to watch that one and not love Doc Holliday. Yeah. <clears throat> Scott? This movie for me, I think, is a... I'm going to go, I think, with an even eight. That's a good score. Which means, yeah, I'll go even eight. I like it. I like the movie a lot. <clears throat> I like it a lot, too. For me, dude, it's tough with our freaking system already. <laughs> Like, personally, this one hits a, a top 10 for me. You know, where I don't think um, Back to the Future is in my top 10. So, what we have to realize is that just because a movie is rated a little bit lower does not mean it can't be in your top 10. That's a That's fair the way thing. to say it. I mean, okay. there's plenty of movies out there that maybe the acting isn't as great or, you know, the comedy... Maybe it hit at a different time for you when you were watching it versus when somebody mm-hmm. else watches it, different age when you started watching it, things like that. Just because it's not your highest rated movie, because like Inception, I don't know if Inception's in my top ten. Yeah, that's, but it's a very, it's very a good movie. Good movie yeah. But to me, it might not be <clears throat> my top ten. Although I probably have it rated as my highest movie grade wise. So where do you put Tombstone? Uh, rating wise, or mm-hmm. I gave it a seven eight. Seven eight. Yep it's it's a very good. I I enjoyed it a lot a lot more than I thought I was going to. Yeah. The I I'm like Star. Don't watch a ton of Western movies, and I was outside of it being a little slow at the beginning because it took a little bit to ramp up. Mm-mm. Once it got going, I was that was very entertained. Yeah, it's the actions one of a kind. Holiday was great. Wider Earp. Wide Earp was awesome. Fairly good. I I liked Holiday the more. Earp, all the Earp brothers, man. Yeah. They all played a role. Um, I, I thought it was a good movie. I want to... I think right after I saw it, I said 8-6. I'm going to stick with it. 8-6. It's, it's just such a good movie. The love aspects of it, the Western side, you know, the heartbreaker, I freaking cried. When Morgan died? When Morgan died. That's yeah, it's tough. There's <laughs> a hard scene. The whole, like, all about it. He goes out, and then his wife's there, and she sees him looking at Josephine. <laughs> like, heartbreak after heartbreak. That's, yeah, that's where it hits for me. That's a, yeah, that's it fair. Rounds it out to a 7.73 7. as a bubble. Yep. What's the time to be? 7.8. So. Oh, fucking right there. Pretty yep. on. Hell yeah. I think that's I think that's a really good score. I think the butthole is right on. IMDb is a little high. That uh, yeah, I think most of the people that watch are probably a little high. <laughs> Star Lamar is now <clears throat> up. I believe he's got his movie picked for next week. I do. Frozen. I, I think we've talked about this movie on the podcast, so I, I'm under the impression most people have seen it. But I was watching some of the UFC highlights over the last weekend, and it got me thinking about a movie that I. Really enjoyed the couple times that I've seen it. Uh, it's called Traps by Tommy. Just kidding. It's called Warrior. Okay. All right. With Tom Hardy and Joel Edgerton. 
2019 flick, huh? Nope. 2011. The 2011 one. What's it on? <laughs> uh, Hulu is where you'll find it. Nice. And this is one, if you haven't seen it, that I strongly suggest. It's kind of a sports movie. It's a family oh, movie. Oh, man. Uh, in the vein of a Rocky, kind of. Maybe a little more drama. But a uh, really good movie. So watch it with the butthole this week, and we'll talk about it next week. Fuck. Awesome. I'm MMA, a- action, sports. It's going to be good stuff. No. I'm excited for it. I haven't seen it before. You have not? I have not. Gage? I've seen it. Yeah, I have not. You haven't? No. This one's in the movie collection of DVDs. This one's pretty badass. Well, sweet. I'm excited to watch it. <laughs> right on. Uh, is that all? We that, did? That's all. Thanks I'm dying. to the Blue Collar Media Group. <laughs> I'm going to die. go jerk off. Uh, bye. Check out our website, www.officialbutthole.com. We're on all socials at Official Butthole. Please leave us a rating and review on Apple Music, and we'll see you next time. Scott's all worried about getting sick when he comes over here, and this motherfucker is bringing it over. No, this is allergies. It's that time of year. Oh, fuck it. Starburst will fix anything. I have shit out of what's experience. Yeah, you got a lot of shit over there. Your whole house. Apparently, people like it. It was kind of the start of Tom Holland, too, right? Ooh, favorite Starburst. Tom Hardy. What's your favorite Starburst color? Yellow. Really? Yes. You're a yellow guy, huh?